Today I'm making a Mexican lager with honey. Let's get started. So before you click off of this, cause you're like, oh, he's making beer now. Yes, I am making a Mexican lager, but I'm adding honey into this. So it's mostly beer, honestly, but it is also a mead, technically it's a braggot. That's where we're gonna categorize it. I don't do a lot of these and it's not cause I don't want to, it's just I'm unfamiliar with them. And I'm starting to get familiar with the beer brewing process and getting more intricate with it. This is my second time to do a lager. Actual, actually the second time to do this recipe. The first time I did it, it was truly a Mexican lager, no honey. I just basically brewed it as a beer. It was very good. People wanted more of it. So I decided to do something different. I wanted to add some honey in. So we're gonna talk about that here in a second and how I added the honey, kind of replaced part of my base uh, malt with the honey so we didn't have a super high alcohol brew. We'll get there in a second. This video is sponsored by New Air. I will be reviewing a product of theirs towards the end and you'll see me use the product through this video because we were lagering this brew, meaning we had to keep it at a uh, lower temperature. So the specific fridge I'm using here is fantastic for that. So to make this recipe, I went to my local brew shop, I picked up my ingredients for my lager and I talked to Liberty there who helped me figure out how to make this into a honey lager. We replaced part of our malt with honey. So I'm gonna put the recipe on screen and talk about the process here. But essentially, 75% of it is sugar from the malts. 25 is coming from the honey. So by the standards of 50% of your brew has to be honey-based sugar, this is not a braggot. However, I feel like there's some perceived honey in there, so I'm gonna call it a braggot. So we have our recipe, we got all of our ingredients, and we went ahead and started to do the beer making process. So I used my all-in-one system that I have. We got our water up to 150 degrees for our mash. This mash was a pretty long process. It was 90 minutes with our grain. We did not add our honey yet, so we added all of our grains, all of our Pilsen malt and our corn yellow flaked malt into that for 90 minutes and allowed that to do the mash process. At the end of the mash process, I'm following in directions from my, another lager recipe. This recipe specifically says to get it up to 168 for 10 minutes. So that's what I, I did. I got it to 168 and held it there for 10 minutes. And then we went ahead and started the runoff kind of sparge process. We added some water on top of that so that we could get clear our grains of all the sugars that were there, but then also get it to where it was ready for the boil. So we added our water to get up to, I believe it was like six and a half gallons and we got to a boil. At the boiling time, we added our hops. Now this is where it gets a little bit tricky. So we added, uh, I gotta go back to my notes for this, 0.1 ounces of Tettenanger hop um, for 90 minutes. At the, the, the top time was 90. At basically 30 minute mark, we went ahead and added even more hops, 1.15 ounces of Tettenanger hops at that 30. So it's kind of weird. So the, I'll try and figure out how to put this on the screen. Um, at the five minutes left of our 90 minutes, we added two ounces of saws and 0.6 ounces of Tettenanger hops for those last five minutes. After the hops were finished in the boiling process, we went ahead and pulled out that basket and we decided to go ahead and add our honey in at this point at flame out. This is the point where the honey will hopefully not lose a lot of its character. So we added two pounds of honey in that time and it mixed in really easily. We then cooled our whole big batch there down to, uh, I believe it was about 85 at the time because I couldn't get it any lower. I was cooling in a hot summer day. And once it was at 85, we transferred it into a big bucket. Once in that bucket, I went ahead and put it into my new air fridge and let it go ahead and cool down to about 55 because we are using lager yeast. We're using the Omega Mexican lager yeast and it ferments best between 50 and 60. Lagering is a lower temp thing. So we got it down to that 55 marker. We made sure to take a gravity reading at this point. Our starting gravity for this brew is 1.055. With honey, we'll see this probably ferment almost completely out. Once it had cooled down to that 55 degrees point, we went ahead and pitched our yeast in. Now we mixed it up, had all of our stuff, left it in that fridge, 
And here's where the weird part of lagering happens because we kind of, especially by what the recipe I'm going off of, they suggest to let it ferment at that 50 to 51 Fahrenheit for the bulk of its time. So it's gonna sit there the whole time. And then at the last eight points, it says on here to let it free rise up to 60 degrees Fahrenheit. And that will hopefully finish out. So then we go through a diacetyl rest for seven days. And there's kind of multiple reasons we do that. Uh, I've learned one thing, one big thing through this lagering process. And that is um, a lot of times these lager yeast are producing a lot more sulfur and kind of the funky gases. And so it kind of doesn't smell great, honestly. And a part of that is to let all of that go ahead and uh, get out of the brew because it stinks. So after the seven days of diastole rest, we let it, uh, we bring it down to 34-ish, 35-ish degrees. And we hold that for two days. And then at that point, we go ahead and keg it. This says to lager in the keg. So that's what we did. I don't know that I let it set for long enough because I still, like I said, have a little bit of funky smell coming from that. And that was just, I think I moved too quickly for the lagering process, but we'll talk about in the tasting. This thing finished at, I think it was like 1.005. So this is about a six and a half percent lager. It's pretty hefty, I would say, but pretty interesting. So we finished our, our brew. We let it set for a while. It's about three and a half, four weeks uh, since we started the process. Let's go ahead and see what it tastes like. All right, we have a pour here. You can see it is not super clear and I don't think that's the end of the world. I think that's just, uh, well, according to some instructions, it says to clear with gelatin. I didn't clear with gelatin, but again, I don't think that's the end of the, the world. So that uh, kind of uh, weird gas I was talking about, the sulfury smell, that's something I looked up with lagering because I smelled it at first and I was like, if I, if I smelled that during a mead, I would be really concerned because I'd be going, oh my gosh, there's a, a, something funky happening here. And I think it's just pretty normal for lagering. People can uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but there is a little more sulfury, sulfury gas and kind of that odd smell you don't normally like uh, in the brew that does off gas out when you let it set for a while. However, because I kind of rushed this into the keg, that's where this went south, is that I, I, I didn't quite give it enough time to lose all that, so it's slowly off gassing that in the keg. But also it's really not, because that's another thing I worried and I looked up how do you avoid that, and a lot of people say, make sure you don't keg it too early because then you'll find yourself dealing with that gas being trapped in the keg now. So here we are. Anyways, what's it taste like? I mean, it is crisp and very bright and refreshing. It does still have a little bit of that pretty fresh pour. I have a little bit of that funk. I don't love that, but I mean, it's pretty dang crushable. Like I said, I've made this before. The honey is really warming and it adds, um, somebody who has a lot of honey in my life, um, I can taste that honey there. It adds some bright floral note on top of this, which is really interesting for what kind of malt and grain bill we had there. Yeah, and these hops are, are a nice balance. This is a fantastic recipe. And that was not made by me. It was really made by Liberty and Adam, who's the guy who originally gave me this recipe. So shout out to them. I'm definitely planning on doing more of this, being more patient with my lagering. And uh, I, I'm excited to do just more with it. It's fun to lager things. And I wanna do some lagering with mead. So you're gonna see more of that in the future but I gotta get there first. So now, let's talk about how I lagered this. And again, this is sponsored by New Air, so I wanna talk about the fridge that they provided me to review. So let's review it. All right, here we are. Of course, I have to get lower for this review because this thing is way far down here. So this is, I'm gonna repeat and say the name of it specifically because I wanna make sure that I get this right. This is the, with the, the uh, title of it on screen. The new air 24 inch beverage refriger refrigerator cooler 177 can black stainless steel with triple layered tempered glass door built in counter or, or freestanding fridge. Compressor cooling with precision digital temperature control 37 Fahrenheit to 65 adjustable and removable racks. Now, a lot of words. It's a, it's a fridge that can be a standalone thing. It can also be inset. Right now you see that it's set into these cabinets, which is part of my brew space. So I have it set in here, I had to build. I'm not gonna get to that part, but my point is, 
It's in my little cabinets. It's pretty dang cool. Right now it's operating and it will pretty much forever operate as my can fridge and my lagering fridge and my yeast fridge. It's gonna be a multi-tasker for me. So right now you see with the light I have in here, lots of cans and bottles, but whenever I was doing my lager, I had it set up in here. Now this thing is very spacious. For what I was using it for specifically with the lagering, I did have to build a little bit of a platform because the bucket I was using was rather um, wide and it wouldn't fit in this little area. So I had to build a little platform and then slide my big bucket in there in order to make it flat. It does hold a lot of stuff. And right now it's not very full, that's fine. It's gonna be full eventually with stuff and I'm gonna use it for a lot of things. I only have two racks in at the moment, but it does come with, uh, I believe, five different racks and the adjustable racks here. What's cool about each one is that you can let it, oh, breaking things. You can literally pull each rack out you pull each rack out towards you, and then it, it has a nice little catch, so if it's not gonna fall. Same thing for top one, you can pull out. I use that one a lot because my yeast live up there. Plenty of space, plenty of adjustable space for you, so if you have mostly cans, you know, you can do stuff like that. If you need higher, lower, all of that. It is deep, it is very quiet too. <laughs> of course the AC kicked on, right? It's, the uh, temperature kicked on right as I said that. But it is quiet. I'll show you. I don't, I mean, when I'm doing things, I don't ever hear it. Don't really ever hear it kick on. So very quiet, nice glass door, good ceiling. It's, it's got a lock on here too. So if you need to, uh, down below, if you need to literally lock the door, say you have some kids or something you're trying to keep out of your beer cooler, you can lock that door and then uh, unlock it whenever you want to get your beer. So spacious, quiet. It's got a good temperature control here that can go from, I believe it, uh, it was 37 degrees Fahrenheit to 65, which is a pretty good range right there. That's something to something in Celsius, if I remember correctly. Uh, my only, I got a couple of complaints with it and I'll get to them in a second. Um, the light here is blue. I don't love a blue light. Like I kind of, Wish it was just a white light, but maybe there's some logic behind a blue light. I don't really know. Uh, it doesn't, obviously doesn't go all the way down when that area is full, so that's fine. The light is nice, I just don't love the, the blue color of it. Um, one weird thing about this is power button doesn't really do anything. Like there is a, a power button up top, but it's not, every time I press it, it's not doing anything. So I don't know what's up with that. The temperature changes easily, quickly, all of those things. It's a very uh, simple interface. Sometimes with these, you don't have a super simple interface. This one is. Yeah, it's a really nice fridge. Good quality. I mean, the build grade quality is nice. The plastic, the metal is nice. The shipping was really good too. It came like double box, basically. Like it was super boxed. So I was not worried about it having any damage. And sometimes you get things from places and um, it looks like it's been through hell and it kind of probably has. So I'm very impressed with this fridge. In my about four weeks with it now, I have loved using it and it operates just like a fridge. I mean, that's it's hard to say much else other than it is an efficient fridge with lots of space, good temperature control. My Here are my, my complaints. You gotta have some, some complaints to be honest. Blue light, it's kind of, uh, I mean, I'm getting particular. I don't love the blue light there, but it's not the end of the world. The price point, it's pretty expensive. So this thing is gonna run you around 950 bucks. Uh, you can definitely find a cheaper fridge for like 600, 650, stuff like that. However, I don't know quality on those. I know that this is pretty dang quality. And I, I, so price point, it's tough. A little bit. But one thing I do, sorry, I mentioned, I, I didn't mention this, but I did have to flip the door. Originally the handle and everything was on this side. And so you can, they give you another bracket to flip the door over. Um, there is a little bit of residue from me taking this nameplate off and putting it up here. So I don't love that I couldn't get this off. I'm sure I could start scraping, but I'm a little worried I'm gonna mess up the, the uh, plastic or glass right here. So you can flip the door, lock it, like we said, Anyways, 
If you are interested in this New Air fridge, I'm gonna put a link down below to it. Um, New Air has sent this to me to review and I'm super thankful for them and thankful for their willingness to uh, invest in the, the man-made mead name. I'm gonna get a ton of use out of this and you too could get a lot of use out of it as well. So check out some links to it below if you're interested in that. So I, I appreciate you. Thank you to New Air for sponsoring this video. And I hope you will check their stuff out, not just this fridge. I am a big New Air fan because they've sent me a lot of stuff that I use every single day. So thank you to New Air, thank you to you for watching this video. If you enjoyed quasi beer content, let me know down below, hit subscribe and I'll see you next time. I don't have my beer, it's up there. Cheers.